This segment of the show is brought to you by the PGA Tour Superstore. See why golfers everywhere are proud to call PGA Tour Superstore their golf pro shop. Visit them online at PGATourSuperstore.com. Now back to Chris and more of the show. Back with me here on the French Lick Resort guest line is my long-lost cousin, John Mascari. Let me remind you about John's background. He attended Ryder University in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, back in the mid to late 90s and graduated with his bachelor's degree in political science and government. From 2000 to 2012, John worked at some of the best golf courses around the state of New Jersey and New York, including Glen Ridge Country Club, Manhattan Woods Golf Club, the Colts Neck Golf Club, Hamilton Farm Golf Club, Canoe Brook Country Club, and Preakness Hills Country Club. He is now the head golf professional at Alpine Country Club in Alpine, New Jersey. He is also a member of Callaway's master staff, and he's been named a top 50 master teacher for U.S. kids. And uh, I am sure that uh, if you go back at the time in Ellis Island and you take the O off of my name, last name, or the I off of his, and you swap them around, we're cousins. And uh, I'm certainly thrilled he is back with me again tonight here on Next on the T. Good evening, cuz. Thanks for coming back on the show. That is some introduction, let me tell you. Wow. (laughs) Can you hear me? Glad you like it. (laughs) Thank you. It's great to be back with you, Chris. I'm doing very well. Very well, thanks. I'm enjoying this uh, beautiful weather we're having in the New York area, wearing shorts, going outside, chipping some balls today. It was great. (laughs) Ah, good for you. So, uh, John, I, I know you were down at the PGA Merchandise Show a few weeks ago. Wanted to get your thoughts. What did you see while you were down there? Ah, I thought it was a great show this year, Chris. You know, it's, it's been something that I've been going to for quite a long time, and it's had its ebbs and flows of being well attended or not so well attended. But this was a really great show. I saw some pretty cool items. I tell you, one of the things that I saw, and I never thought I'd be saying this, but was scooters and bikes on the golf course. Did you hear about these things? Yeah. Yes. So, Sun Mountain has a electronic bike division now, and they they've come out with this this bike called the the Fin Scooter. It operates on a, a lithium ion battery, much like your cell phone, and, but can go 36 holes with a bag on it. You know, big wide tires, not messing up the turf. I thought it was awesome. So, any other technology, John? While you were there, you know, kind of reach out to you and say, "Boy, I got to get me one of those." I thought it was really interesting to see how many new launch monitors and simulators were at the show, even from last year to this year. There was a huge section looking about indoor golf and um, launch monitors and tracking software. And it's just a testament to where the game is going to, where people are looking more into having stuff indoors, less time consuming. Maybe they're having it in their house. Maybe they'll have it at their office. But, boy, it's exploded beyond belief. I thought that was really interesting to look at versus years past, and I'm sure it will only continue to grow. And, John, I know you're a Callaway guy, so i got to get your feedback. Have you uh, started playing the new Epic Flash driver? I have. I played three rounds with it already so far this year, and it is all that it's hyped up to be. And I'm not just saying that. It is awesome. So. What about it is different or better? Are you seeing just, is it more distance? Is it a, a different feel? How do you feel? Like, what, what's the advantage, you think, of the new Flash? It's certainly a different feel and a little different sound off the face. Um, but what I'm really feeling is the ball jumps off the face of this club. Like, I've never hit a, a driver before. It explodes off the face. It's got that, that Flash face that they used uh, – I think they used the Watson IBM system, artificial intelligence, to come up with this perfect face for a driver. You know, off-center hits, you know, a little bit in the heel, a little bit off the toe, still go a long way. And, boy, it was – it just, like I said, improved ball speed. It was almost like giddy getting up there on the tee. Just – I hit numerous (laughs) 300-plus-yard drives, and I felt like I could call my shot off the tee. And, you know, having that confidence where you can just be, I'm going to hit this up the right side and I'm going to hit this up the left side makes the fairway look a lot bigger and, and, and takes a lot of pressure off the rest of my game. <laughs> John, I want to get some some playing lessons from you. And you mentioned being able to play inside and uh, being up there in New Jersey. And for all of us that are still trapped inside because it's too cold to either go out and play around the golf or even get out on the range, 
How can we keep our games in shape for the rest of the winter? Well, I, I always feel like if there's anything that I want to keep sharp, it's going to be my short game, whether it's putting and chipping, because I can kind of do those indoors, whether it's in the basement putting a little bit or if I get a, a warm day or a road day where I can just go outside and hit some chip shots, it works. So I, I feel like that's the most important part for me is to keep that short game as sharp as I can. Like I said, it was it was 62 in New York City today, so I got I had a chance to get outside and and knock a few putts around and chip around the green. So, you know, if you, if you can get indoors to a simulator, it's great too, but um, close quarters, you can always do your short game work. John, I want to get your thoughts. Sort of a theme of the show tonight has been talking about some of the new rules that have gone into effect, and we've seen some things kind of go sideways. So I want to get your thoughts. When, you, when you've seen some of these uh, penalties for caddies, you know, being behind a guy or lining a guy up on the uh, on the putting greens and that sort of thing. What are your thoughts? Have, have we gone too far? Is it a good rule? Is it a bad rule? Do we need to rethink it? What do you, what, no, what's been I your think, thought as you see some of these rules? I think it's. I just think it's a process, Chris. You know, it's. I think the USG has good intentions with these changes. The rules of golf tend to be a little frightening to a lot of people, and I know the casual golfer doesn't play by them all the time. But I think this is still just the first step in something deeper going on. There's definitely going to be some amendments to these roles in the, in the coming years. As far as the, the stuff with guys and caddies, and I think they just have to get used to it at this point. I think it's a good thing. We're working on making the game a little more enjoyable, making it a little faster, and we'll figure it out. How about leaving the flag stick in? You leaving the flag stick in when you're putting <laughs> now or no? So funny story. So my first birdie of the year down in Florida – with the flag stick in, right in the cup, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Four holes later, I have an eagle putt. It is going right at the hole, rams off the flag stick and goes out. So I, I'm, I'm taking it out. I'm done. That was my one experiment. It lasted about 12 holes. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. How about the drop? I, as I see you guys now, you know, some guys are squatting all the way down. Some guys, uh, some awkward positions to, so they could drop it from knee height. Is, do we need to go to knee height from shoulder length? I, I didn't think we need to do that. You know, it's funny. I'm a, I'm a big baseball fan. I remember Tony Pena was a catcher, and he used to get down to yes. really weird one-leg-out type thing. I mean, his knee was about two inches off the ground. I'm waiting for a guy to get down there in a position like that and just kind of drop it off his knee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing. These guys, uh, you, they're probably very good dancers. They have some good moves with the knees. They can get really down there and <laughs> drop it two inches right. from the ground. That's awesome. I have the flexibility of a brick, so I really can't get down that far. So, John, when you're working with your students now, what what what's the most common mistake that you see amateurs consistently making with with our swings, out, whether it's on the range or maybe it's different out on the golf course? What are the mistakes, and how can we fix it? So, one of the things I've been thinking a lot about, and especially this time of year, like I said before, is a lot of a lot of people are, are really focusing on their short games, and what I see so many times is this lean, if you're right-handed, leaning left on that left foot and getting the hands way ahead of the club head and moving the ball back. And everyone's just letting that club work real steep into the ground. And boy, so many people, if they can learn how to use the bounce of a wedge and learn how to let that, that club shallow out and really not focus so much on hitting the ball contact, or you could even, you could even hit it fat and still hit a good chip shot, like hit behind it. So I try to get my students to really understand how to get the club working back and forth, not slam, you know, not digging the club down into the ground, but just more of a, almost like that back edge, that not so much the leading edge, but the back edge of the flange, letting that skip off the ground. You know, and they hit, it's amazing. It's almost chunk proof. I'll tell them, I'm like, try to hit an inch behind it. And they do, and the ball still will go out. So I, that's one of the things I would say the most <laughs> egregious error, I think, in, in around the greens is really getting those hands ahead and then taking that bounce off the club. We want to use the bounce. The bounce is our friend here. <laughs> Don't be and, mean and to your John, friend. To take, that, <laughs> to take that one step further, when you're teaching your students, you know, when you're in that, you know, 10, 20 yards off the green, 
right? Mm -hmm. And, and it, let's let, for the sake of, of this example, let's say the pin's just in the middle of the green. What are you teaching them to do? Are, are you a more take a pitching wedge and, and bump and run it up there? Are you a sand wedge and let's, you know, fly it up there? Are you a, a lob wedge guy to get it way up in the air? And that, how, how do you tell your students to hit that golf shot? I'm, I'm yes to every one of those. It's, I think it's, it's something you have to ask the student. You know, some people are definitely afraid of that lob wedge. Some people feel more comfortable grabbing a seven iron and bumping it up and letting it run up on the green. It's all about what you feel comfortable with, what you can hit. And, and I, I will tell my students, let's hit this shot with three different clubs. Just to understand that you can, for lack of a better, you could, there's more than a few ways to skin a cat here. We can get this ball close to the hole in a different amount of ways. And I would encourage everyone listening, if, don't just reach for that sandwich that you always reach for. Next time you're out there practicing, bring a seven iron, bring a six iron, bring a hybrid, bring a lob wedge. Just think outside the box and try different shots. You'll be surprised that you can get the ball close a bunch of different ways. And, John, like I mentioned in your intro, you're the head golf professional at Alpine Country Club there in Alpine, New Jersey. For those of us who are unfamiliar with the club in the area, talk about your home club. Yeah, sure. Alpine is, we're kind of in the top right corner of New Jersey, right on the Hudson River, not far from New York City. It's a, um, 1928 design, Tillinghouse design. As you can, as you know, a lot of clubs near us, such as Wingfoot, Ridgewood, all Tillinghouse golf courses. Um, it's a fantastic club. Uh, we were just named to one of the, uh, to a list of one of the most distinguished clubs in America by Boardroom Magazine, you know, to be recognized as providing a, a member experience at a level attained by only the finest clubs. It's something that we're all very proud of. Uh, we're in the middle of actually doing a uh, pretty big clubhouse interior facelift. We're expanding our banquet area, giving ourselves some more versatility for members and our guests. And uh should be should be done by March. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, on our calendar this year, we're going to be hosting the U.S. Open local qualifying. So that'll be great, too. So uh, we'll have some of the best players from the Northeast at Alpine, trying to make their way to Pebble Beach this year. Should be fun. And, John, you do your own show with uh, Anita Marks on ESPN Radio up there in New York City. Talk about your show and how our listeners can find it and tune in. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, Anita and I, we, we did about uh, 25 shows last year together on ESPN. We tape out of New York City. You can find us on the ESPN app. Our, the show is called On the Team. Uh, we had a, a great run this past year. We'll be kicking it off uh, Masters weekend this year. We had some great guests. Uh, Mike Tirico, Tony Finau, who had a great year. My hero growing up, Freddie Couples, uh, CBS Sports, Amanda Balionis, to name a few. It was really a great show. Um, so, yeah, check out ESPN, the app. Uh, if you're in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area, maybe even a little bit near Philly, you can get us on 98.7. ESPN radio on the FM dial six to seven every Saturday during golf season. And John, how can our listeners stay up to date with all the great things you're doing with trying to follow you, whether it's on social media and then also trying to book a lesson as well. Sure. You can always please follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter. John Mascari PGA is my Twitter handle. Uh, as far as booking some lessons with me or Give us a call at the Alpine Country Club. Uh, AlpineCC.org is our website. It has all of our contact information and emails on there. Well, cuz, it's always fun spending some time with you. Thanks for coming back and, uh, and being a part of the show, persevering through, trying to get through on the guest line. I appreciate the effort very I know. much. I must it's have, always uh, a lot of I must fun. Have not, I must have not paid my phone bill this month. I couldn't get through. <laughs> <laughs> so is it awkward for me to ask my cousin for some money to help out with the phone bill? <laughs> uh, that's what family's for, right? If you there you go. If you yeah, spend time mail. with them, the ask them right. for money. That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right, Chris. Hey, it's a pleasure to be on with you. Thank you. I appreciate you, John. Take care. All the best to you and your family. Okay, pal. You as well. Have a good night. Yeah. You too. That's John Mascari, and again, uh, you follow him online at John Mascari uh, PGA. It's, uh, he, he does some fun stuff on there. I enjoy following Mark. Or, I mean, uh, it's following John and uh, having him as part of the show. He's a lot of fun and uh, character. And check him out on ESPN Radio. Do do find him on the ESPN app. Uh, his show is a lot of fun, as you can hear just from 
this amount of time. Imagine getting to, getting to spend more time with him. Outstanding stuff. Looking forward to having John back on the show soon. All right, folks, it's time for me to put a bow on this episode of Next on the T. My sincere thanks go out again to Owen Brown, Terry Kaler, and John Mascari for joining me tonight. Please give me your thoughts. Check out our page on Facebook, Next on the T with Chris Mascaro, and give me, you know, put a comment in there. You know, let me know if you've got a question for one of our previous guests or one of our future guests, and you can see our guest schedule out there on our website, nextonthetea.net. But let me know. Be glad to try to get that uh, question answered for you. Please also check out our sister show on the football side, Thursday Night Tailgate with me and my co-host Bob Lazari and our announcer Joe Lajanusha. That show airs live every Thursday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time right here on Blog Talk Radio. And that show like this one also available as a free podcast on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audio Boom, and Amazon Alexa. Just say, Alexa, play podcast next on the T and boom, it's going to start playing for you. So check us out there as well. On Thursday night, Tailgate, we are joined every week by five NFL legends sharing their stories from their playing days and sharing their insights into what's going on around the league now. We also highlight two players doing great things in their communities in our Spotlight on the Positive segment. Both shows on their websites, ThursdayNightTailgate.com, this show next on the T.net. Folks, thank you again for choosing to listen to this show tonight. We know you got a lot of shows and podcasts out there to check out and we really appreciate the fact that you're making part of and making us part of your golfing content until next week hit them straight my friends